Today we're going to be comparing DUI's top of the line tri laminate dry suit, the CLX 450 with Mod's tri laminate dry suit. We're going to be comparing things like the stitching and seams, wrist seals, dry gloves, neck seals, and overall the quality and construction of the dry suits. At the end of the video, I'll be doing a deep dive into the price differences. So stick around if you're curious to see what is different with the Mods dry suit and a DUI. We're down here at the dive site today and comparing my mods dry suit and Jeremy's DUI dry suit. Jeremy, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about your dry suit, which one you have? Yeah, sure. So, good to be here with you, Mark, by the way. This is fine. We're in the very active uh, dive site and recreational site here, so sorry about all the noise. This is a DUI CLX, I think 450, if I remember correctly. Um, I bought this suit used a, a, a few years ago. Since I bought it, I've put about 350 to 375 dives on the suit. In that time, I did have to replace my main zipper. And I'm really due to, to replace this uh, courtesy of this convenience zipper as well. We can talk a little bit about some of the similarities and some of the differences. So one thing that I was curious about to compare the differences is the, the inner seams, the stitching, and and the seal. So with Jeremy's suit, you can tell it's got the, the, a glued seam, which Mods is doing the same thing with the glued stitching. As you can see, the stitching here, it's got a double, got double stitching there. And the, the seams on the mod suit are similar where they're double stitched. And it's a very similar cut. So as you can see, the like the crotch area comes together and with the mods. It's very similar construction as far as how the seams come together. Stitching looks to be about the same inside and out on both suits. One of the biggest things for me when I chose my dry suit over my old dry suit was the seals. So Jeremy, can you tell us a little bit about your seals? Yeah, sure. So and they've done a really great job on these seals at uh, at DUI. In fact, I did actually replace uh, one of these seals. This one, I believe, has been on here for at least 350 dives. It's been very durable. They make these seals very easy to change yourself. They work kind of like a Ziploc bag. So they just unzip like that. Okay. When, you, when you go to, to change them. I didn't notice you've used a little bit of talcum powder. Yeah, definitely. Now these are silicone seals, so oh. you don't necessarily have to use talcum powder, but that just makes it easy for me to slip, oh, my, okay. slip my hands in and out of there. Uh, so that, that's the reason I use that. And then these just go back together, kind of like a kind of like a Ziploc bag. It's easier to do this if you put just a little bit of uh, liquid baby soap or something to, to lubricate. Um, but yeah, they basically just go back, go back together, just like just a little, like the way a Ziploc bag works. I would say the only downside to these seals is just the cost. Uh, these seals have, I think, about doubled in cost um, in the past couple of years, and I think they're, uh, without quoting a number, they're approaching the two hundred dollar range at this point. They're they're in that ballpark. They're, they're well over a hundred dollars uh, to replace seals. So, but compared to the mods seals which use SciTech seals there's there's a bit of a cost difference there you also mentioned the dry gloves yeah another system that i use in the winter time when it's colder are these dry gloves now they attach into the exact same same zips as as the seals a couple of differences you'll notice on these gloves compared to maybe some of the other dry glove systems out there um, again the cost of replacing these gloves is high um, so that's probably the main detractor one other thing, there, there's not a redundant seal inside here. A lot of uh, dry suit gloves are designed so that within the glove, there's still a still a wrist seal, so that if you puncture the glove, you don't flood your whole suit. If you puncture one of these gloves, you're gonna have a you're gonna have a wet dive. And then finally, the one thing that's probably a little bit tough dealing with these gloves once once they're in place, this isn't something you can snap on and off while you're on shore. You know, you put these on and you leave them on for, for the duration of the winter uh, effectively. And that means when you're gearing up, once you put your dry suit on, you're wearing these big gloves. So with these big gloves, if you're trying to get a wrinkle out of your neck seal, 
they're trying to adjust gear, get things clipped on, etc. You've got a lot of dexterity that you've lost. Once you're underwater, you get a pretty good little squeeze on these, and your dexterity is honestly better than it is with a wetsuit glove for me. Um, but on land, you're kind of big, big blue clubs that you're dealing with. So that can be one thing that's just a little bit tougher um, as you're getting ready, ready for the ready for the dive while you're still on shore. Otherwise, you know, again, convenience factor of being able to do all this yourself and being able to easily replace and carry a spare so that you'll never miss a dive because you ripped a seal as you were getting your suit on or, or something like that. With the Mods dry suit, the, you have the option of getting latex seals, which are glued in, which is the standard. I opted to go with the upgrade for the dry glove system, which also has silicone seals uh, that are user replaceable. I, you can go to the video where I, you can just pop this out and replace the, the wrist seal. Um, you can do it without a tool, but it does come with a tool to make it a little bit easier. And one thing, like Jeremy was saying, that, you know, that I did like about these is that you can pop this ring out here and change the glove very easily and, and very cost effectively. A replacement glove is about $10. Um, you can pretty much use like a kitchen glove and it'll just lock back into this ring, which then you'll you'll reuse. Uh, another thing that I like about this system is that it is a twist on and lock. So as after I get all geared up, I can put my gloves on last. It just twists this. Actually, that's the wrong the wrong hand, but I just twist this, and I'm able to do this as you've seen in other videos, just by giving my hand a little bit of a twist and holding this, and then my my dry glove is, is locked on there. And the other thing is I do have the wrist seal as a backup. If I did get a puncture in the, in the dry glove, I have a, a backup seal um, to hopefully make sure I have a, a dry dive. And as Jeremy was saying, his gloves doesn't have the, the a dam but there is an, a heavy duty with dam system available, which would you know, prevent your suit from flooding if, you're, if your glove did get a puncture. Another thing I like about the DUI system is that it does come with the insulated gloves. But for me, I've been warm enough in the 50 to 60 degree waters of the Pacific Northwest using these glove liners. And since I got dry gloves, I haven't gone back to neoprene gloves. I just really like them. So in comparison, uh, these are Jeremy's DUI insulated gloves. They look pretty warm. Yeah, they're, they are definitely warm. It's a night and day difference diving with the dry glove compared to the, to the wetsuit glove. So I haven't dove in the winter with my dry suit yet, but I'm looking forward to that because I know last year there was a couple days where my hands were so numb I could not take apart my gear at the end of the dive. We're going to take a look at Jeremy's neck seal. All right again uh, this has been a really durable neck seal. I have at least 350 dives on this specific seal. No need to have it very tight. Just a nice loose fit around the neck. Seals really really well. The one and only thing I have ever had happen that's caused me not to be completely dry in this seal Every once in a while, this this zipper here pops up just a little bit, maybe like like so, and then it may have a tendency to leak a little bit of water. So every time before I get in for a dive, I make sure to just run my hand on that, make sure it's uh, nice and tight. Otherwise, much like the way that the wrist seal works, this uh, neck seal just zips in here just like the way a Ziploc bag works. And again, it's silicone. With the Mods dry suit, the standard would be a glued in latex seal, but you do have the option for the Cytex system, which is a user replaceable. Uh, there's, it comes with a tool to pop that little yellow ring out, which seals into the, the suit. And it's also a silicone neck seal. I have not trimmed it yet. I prefer to, to try to stretch rather than cut, but uh, you do have the option of latex or silicone replacement seals uh, or to, to get it either way. With the potential cost of having to replace a seal, Mods is pretty 
affordable when it comes to the seals. Different. I mean, yeah. I, I like the G1 because it, it, it uh, zips on both sides. This right. G2 is better if you, and I have a pretty big head. I can fit my head through it, but G2 will fit a larger, you know, it's a larger ring around your neck. So we're looking at the difference in, in suspenders. Um, Jeremy was pointing out that his, th there are some newer DUI suits that'll, that come with a little beefier suspenders. Yeah, I think most of your newer suits have a, a wider and a stronger suspender. I've been lucky with these, they've never broken, but uh, they don't uh, they don't support, I think, as well as a, as a larger suspender. Would. When I'm looking at DUI's website and trying to compare their suits, it's a little unclear if you get pockets. Or... Now, do you have two pockets or one? Yeah, no, unfortunately, and if I was ordering a suit today, I would make sure to have two pockets. It's a, it's a good pocket. Uh, it has a built-in knife sheath, which I don't use. It has a two-way two -way zipper. Uh, so you can, you can unzip it from either direction if you're under the water. That makes it a little bit easier on you. It does have a key ring in here for attaching anything you want. So the only detractor on this pocket is really probably its size. So I always carry a DSMB. I prefer to just keep that in the pocket because there's nowhere for it to, nowhere for it to catch on anything or, or, or anything else. I also always like to carry a backup light in my pocket. So if I have the DSMB and the light in there, it's full. There's nothing else really going in there. I could pick up a couple golf balls I'd find along the way and maybe squeeze them in there. But there's no room for another like a redundant mask, for example. I was going through a time recently where my mask was starting to, starting to come apart. So I'm thinking, well, I'm borrow time with this mask. I better make sure I have a, an extra one with me. So at that point, I was carrying the mask in the pocket. No room for the DSMB anymore. So I had to put that on to the outside and kind of reduce the trim a little bit. So. If I was ordering this suit, I would just make sure to get probably at least a second pocket and maybe preferably one of the large pockets that, that folds over and, and really, really opens up large to fit items in there. Jeremy was saying one of the things I wanted in my next dry suit was to have two pockets. It's, it's very handy, convenient. Uh, my BCD doesn't carry a whole lot of, of stuff. I have a rescue mask, a, a slate in my pockets, uh, but other than that, that's that's about as much as I can carry my BCD. So with these pockets, there are two compartments in here. There's extra, there's bungee cords here. And then I also have this top pouch, which has a couple bungee cords. Well, oh, I need to tie that one back down. But, uh, you know, both are the same size and I think they're a little bit, I think they're a little bit larger, but maybe with, with the this flap style, I was able to put a, a fishing flasher in here and just kind of fold it over like that, which uh, allowed for a little bit of extra space. And I have not maxed out and stuffed these totally full yet, but I do put an SMB and a reel in one. And since I have two, I put my light in the other side. So as far as the zippers, um, do you recall if you I don't know if there's options you have with DUI or if that's... I think there are. This zipper is completely different from most of the zippers I've, I've seen on anybody else's dry suit. So as you see, this zipper is closed in the, in the up position, up across the shoulder. So to unzip, you actually pull down. Okay. Pretty much every other zipper I've ever seen is configured the opposite of that, where you pull down across your body to close the zipper and... This one is the opposite, so you actually pull up. Now, have you tried other zippers? Is that is that a preference that you have, or I've used other. I have used a few other zippers. It doesn't make any difference to me personally. Um, I don't know if maybe the person that had this maybe had a shoulder issue or something that uh, caused them to order the suit this way. Again, it was a used suit when I bought it, and when I re when I when I had the zipper replaced, they just put put the new zipper on the exact same way the old one was. Um, and we didn't really think about talking about it or anything like that. So it works fine for me. I'm used to it. I would say the one thing you have to be careful with the zipper configured this way, since the uh, cover zipper is still still zips down, you got to be careful not to not to hook that potentially. I mean, I could see a world where maybe you hook that and then you pull this down just a little a little bit, and now you're having a wet dive. Well, you haven't had done that in 350 dives. I, have I haven't you? done that. No, no, I've. Uh, I've forgotten to zip it once or twice all the way up. Every once in a while I have a bad habit of leaving it a little bit open so you don't get that squeeze on land and then get to the water or, or maybe even start start to, to get in the, in the surf a little bit and go, oh man, and have to zip it up. Uh, courtesy zipper, 
very, very handy um, for essentially being able to use the restroom without taking off the suit. It's cold, rainy, windy, etc. Uh, it's been a really handy feature. Um, as you can see, to look at this zipper, we see all this uh, you know inner material starting to come out. For that's actually the the the, the string that reinforces the, the waterproof zipper. Um, it's completely worn out. I'm afraid to even open it right now. I'm leaving it shut. Um, within the next few weeks, I plan to to send this back and, and have it replaced. And then you also have a P valve. And I do. Yep, I've got the, the P valve too. The P valve, yeah. which was an add-on option um, as well. Uh, I'm not a technical diver, I'm really just a recreational diver, and so most of my dives are maybe about an hour max, um, and so I've never really had need for it. If you're doing a longer tech dive, deco dive, etc., I can see where it'd be a very useful feature. So with the Mods dry suit, you do have the option for a, a heavy-duty T-zip zipper, which is the, the plastic style, or you can do the metal style, which is the, the brass, and it does come with a, a protective cover, just like that Jeremy's DUI does. You do have the option to zip from the left side down or the right side down, um, but I have not heard or, or was not aware of the reversed zipper, so I'm not sure maybe that's something that's possible, but uh, with mods, it's very customizable and they are able to accommodate uh, custom requests. So we're talking about the differences in boots. All right, my suit also came with these uh, neoprene, crushed neoprene sock style booties. Um, when you dive with these, uh, you have to put a, an over boot uh, over the top of that. This is useful, as you can see uh, here in the Northwest, we do a lot of shore diving and we have walks down to the surf where we're going over rocks, sand, etc. So having an, a, a strong uh, boot is very important. Uh, the one probable uh, advantage of this boot is that this is easily replaceable. Uh, so if this boot wears out, it can be replaced easily by just buying a new boot and then put it over your sock foot. And with mods, you do have the option for the crushed neoprene sock that you would then put the rock boot over. I chose to go with the, the boot that uh, is integrated. I just like the convenience of of being able to strap it on and be ready to go, not having to tie shoes and shoelaces, that sort of thing. Um, but Jeremy made a, a real good point that with the amount of walking we do here in the Pacific Northwest to the shore dives, it might be a good idea if you were worried about wearing out the soles of your shoes in your boot, you might want to consider the, the socks and then the, the boot as well, the rock boot. Looking at a little bit of the difference of like knee pads here um, on the mods dry suit the knee pad is just a double fabric option you do have the option for kevlar as well which i'm not sure what this fabric is here it feels like it's neoprene I think maybe it's neoprene yeah and it's definitely um, i believe an option i know there is also an option to reinforce the groin and if you're running a back plate that has a crotch strap that's probably a really good option to go ahead and step up to I don't have that, and as you can see, there is some wear and tear, so that will ultimately probably create some wear um, on the suit that will result eventually in some weakening. And with mods, you also have the option for the reinforced butt pad as well. Um, I didn't feel like that was necessary, so I, I did go with the heavy poly fabric, which is the, with mods, you do have the option with every suit. You can get a ripsop nylon, and you can get that in black. Uh, it's double ripsop nylon, which is available in black, or there's a, rips off nylon that's available in some camouflage patterns as well but I went with the heavier duty heavy poly nylon. I think that pretty much covers it for the uh, on land comparison and we're gonna go dive here at Redondo. See you underwater. One of the biggest differences is customization and with mods you get the custom tailored fit per order so they don't have off the shelf suits that you can buy. Now their lead time is very fast. It's a three week turnaround. You provide your measurements and they will make you a suit that is completely made for you. There's no additional charge for what size boots you need. If you need a little longer leg, they're gonna cut the suit in that piece to match your leg. They're not going to take a suit that's pre-made and add a couple inches to it with extra seams, seals, and, and potential leak points they're going to give you a suit that is completely made just for you. I would appreciate if you hit like and subscribe.
So in conclusion, both dry suits are great. And DUI makes a great suit, great company, but dollar for dollar, you can get the same quality of suit with mods and likely save a good chunk of money. In addition to things like the cost of the replacement, things like gloves, seals, and also neck seals, you're gonna save money on the initial purchase of the dry suit as well. With mods dry suits, the base model starts at around $2,000. And the difference in each of these models is the overlay, which is basically the graphical or the color portion that's going to be on the suit. So they have models where you get a, a small amount of, of color and they have models where you'll get full color on the chest, over the arms and shoulders, down all the way down the arms. And some will be mid elbow, mid shoulder. To start with the MDH model, which is what I have, you can start by picking a gender. The cut and the custom sizing is specific for everyone. So no matter what your measurements are, they'll make a suit perfectly for you, including the boot size. You start with the fabric options, which you have standard double ripstop nylon or black ripstop nylon, as well as a few other combinations and heavy poly, which is the same basic material that the CLX 450 is made from. With the Ripsop Nylon, it's a little bit lighter weight. By no means a lightweight fabric. It's a heavy duty material. It's heavier duty than a lot of premium dry suits, but it is lighter weight than heavy poly, which is going to be maybe a little easier to fold, maybe a little bit more comfortable. But for comparison to the CLX 450, we'll choose the heavy poly. And any of these overlays designs are going to be included. There's no additional charge for the overlays. Whereas with DUI, they will charge for the coloring and the overlays and the pinstriping or the piping. Now mods will charge extra if you do want to do the piping on the arms, which uh, I'll get to in a second. And the only thing that mods would charge extra for is if you decided to do your own custom design. You just supply the graphic and you can get whatever you want printed here. Adding color to the pockets is included both top and bottom, you get to choose. Stripes, like I said, you can choose up to three stripes. You can choose which direction the zipper will go. The zippers, you can get a, a T-zip zipper is standard, which is the heaviest duty plastic zipper you can get. Or for $69, you can upgrade to the metal zipper. With the plastic zipper, there's pros and cons to both of these. With the plastic zipper, it's likely gonna be a little more comfortable and easier to zip up and down and it's less maintenance, but the longevity of a metal zipper, as long as you maintain it and, and don't cause any damage to it, might be a little longer, but that's up for a debate and there's many opinions on that. From what I hear, plastic zippers are much better than what they were a few years ago. But for this comparison, I'm gonna choose the metal zipper. You can also choose add color for the outer zipper, which is the protective zipper, which is included. And you can also choose to have a, a SciTech valve that is a push button or a slide activated for the same cost either way. P valves are going to be a little bit less costly. And this is the installed cost, which is a little bit less than, than DUI. And same thing with convenience zipper. And you can get that with the T-zip zipper or a metal zipper. Latex neck seal is what comes standard. But if you want to go with a SciTech, silicone or the SciTech latex ring system, which has the user interchangeable neck seal. That'll be $219 to add new and replacement neck seals are very affordable. The glued on latex wrist seals are standard versus silicone, or you can upgrade to the silicone interchangeable wrist seals system, which includes the dry gloves. So for this example, I'm going to choose the silicone neck seal and silicone seals and dry gloves. In a basic color overlay, the boots are in black, or you can also get them printed in the matching overlay pattern or the custom overlay pattern. Knee pads with mods come standard with double main fabric, or you can upgrade to Kevlar, which is less expensive than what DUI will charge. And same thing with butt pad, which is available. You can go double main fabric on the butt pad, or you can go Kevlar. And same thing with elbow pads. You can get double main fabric or Kevlar. For further customization, you can get Velcro on the shoulder as an option, as well as doing Velcro on the pockets, or you can do a combination of both. 
And you do get a hood included, either a three mil or five mil, or for $50, you can get a seven mil hood. I went with the seven mil and I've been pretty comfortable with that. And it's middle of October yet. And I'm not needing to switch to a 10 mil yet. And you can also customize with your initials or lettering that will be printed on the bottom of the suit as well. And you can choose the font. So with that, with the options I've selected, I'm at 29.45. And to compare to a DUI CLX 450, the prices will range from about 34.38 to 47.68. And there's a bunch of different packages. I've gone between a few different sites to, to try to get the best price comparison. But to start with, if you wanna add cargo, uh, the pockets, if you want two pockets like the DUI, uh, like the Mod Strike suit comes standard with, you'll be adding about $320. And if you want to add dry gloves, it'll be another $200. That's without any custom sizing. And again, with mods, custom sizing is included. With DUI, I've seen anywhere from $300 to $700 for custom sizing, whether that's custom sizing in the suit or, or boots. Uh, there's a bit of a range um, depending on maybe the package, the model, that sort of thing. And also with the, uh, the DUI, most everything is going to be an extra charge, whether it's the colors and the overlay or the piping, the stripes, what type of boots you're getting. There are a, a couple options that'll be standard. The, the Kevlar and all those other options are going to be extra as well, as well as the extended warranties. And if you wanted to go with the MDTL model, which has the most overlay, the largest overlay pattern, and if you were doing heavy poly with a custom design in your own printing, say you wanted to do the plastic zipper or the metal zipper, we'll just add the metal zipper just for comparison. Adding the silicone neck seal, adding the silicone gloves and dry gloves, or adding the silicone seals and dry gloves. And, and if you wanted to add the custom printing on your boots as well, and choosing a seven millimeter hood. And choosing to get your, your custom initials. And once you've made your selections, you will, you'll upload your custom measurements and the lead time to have a suit made is about three weeks. Both these are great suits. Use the links down below to check them out. Thanks again for watching. And if you like this video, please subscribe, hit like, and share it with any of your friends that you want to get into diving or who need a dry suit. Thanks again.